I'm a farmer. I'm a fourth generation farmer, actually. I've got four decades of agriculture and food experience. Now we just heard that uh, you don't want to trust the SME, right, subject matter expert, which I would agree. So I'm by nowhere and in no way an expert in this industry. I'm a student like everybody else is. But I recall the days when I was with my grandfather, my father in the fields, hot summer days, 100% humidity, 100 degrees temperature outside, plowing, plowing, harvesting, and transporting our food products around the world. Very complicated. But in reflecting on that, the technology advancements that have taken place since those days, on the pretty basic kind of things, air conditioning combines, air conditioning tractors. It's much more advanced than that. I wish I would have had air conditioning combines and tractors in my day. But what we see today is much more precision agriculture. We see things along the lines of using satellite imagery, drone technology, auto steer that drives the tractors and combines. But how did we get there? I still see a tremendous opportunity for this industry. But I also see of why I'm here. Because I see that we are part of something new out there. We are part of the next stage. So we worked with some folks and built this largest vertical farm in the world that we'll talk about here momentarily. But in the meantime, how did we get here? We see this. Thousands of years ago, we as human beings used tech, like you just heard, technology, innovation to make food happen, putting sticks in the ground, putting a seed in it, or just throwing seeds all over the place. What's needed though was because of mechanization. And this didn't start here until the 20th century, the earliest of the 20th century. So thousands of years it took for us to get to where this is today, a lot. I remember my grandfather driving this type of equipment, not that long ago, to be honest with you. But we also see as the world grows, there's got to be more technology put in place. There's got to be this continual adoption and elevation of technology in the way things are done. Here you see irrigation. But here as well, when you've got a 10,000-acre farm driving over it with a tractor or a sprayer or whatever else to provide food to the world, it becomes uneconomical and unenvironmental. So you go to the air. But what's next? This is what's next. On my farm in Illinois, this is what we're seeing using the drones, using satellite imagery. The big thing is the autonomous tractor, autonomous trucks, autonomous wagons that are next to you when you're in the fields making things happen. So it's wonderful to see this fourth evolution of agriculture, but I would say this, I would challenge everybody, what's next? And that's what this is. I'm just proud to be a part of this next progression. This is a joint venture partnership we had with Emirates Airlines, Emirates Flight Catering. And to be honest with you, it has incorporated some of the most transformational technologies I've seen in food and ag put into this farm. I honestly see this farm as one of these next wonders of the world because it's such a phenomenal experience. So what's inside of these farms? Of course, it's technology. We embrace technology to, I would say, to the extreme because you have to use technology to make scale. Scale and profitability. You can't have a business without making money. But at the same time, the products coming out of this farm are affordable by consumers. Because this farm itself, it is 330,000 square feet, which means that it is seven U.S. football fields, which is pretty amazing to put inside. But we continue to see growth and development in this industry, though. What's amazing by the adoption of this technology, we're able to not use what I call sides. So what is a side, like a pesticide? But there's fungicides, algicides, herbicides, rodenticides, numerous other things, and GMOs. Because of the technology we use, we do not need to use any of those products. We produce a clean, healthy food product that you really don't want to wash when you take home. Because as soon as you wash and take it home, you just made it dirtier. And in our farms, we use water. The water we use has been stripped of the metals, the PFAS material, this non-stick metal material that's in all of our food and all of our bodies right now. That's stripped out as well as the chemicals and plastics. Plastics are in all of our water. That's all taken out because we know we are what we eat. And that's really important to all of us. We have to keep that in mind as we move this thing forward. Now, we're not trying to play Mother Nature. I say we are the first, first cousin of Mother Nature. And the fact that we control the temperature, the light, the airflow, everything inside that farm because we want those plants to grow. For us and in our industry, plants first approach. We really want to be the optimal food product out there for the, for the world. 
And this farm is really showing that. So again, I don't want to play Mother Nature. I'm the first cousin of Mother Nature because I know as soon as I say Mother Nature, replacing her, there'll be a course correction uh, on somebody's part. But with these farms, you're going to see a tremendous amount of growth and opportunities. Consistent, quality, clean product on the shelf day in and day out. One of our farms produces 48,000 meals a day. So when you get a lettuce at a restaurant or at home, usually it's two ounces. So 48,000 meals a day of that lettuce, of a product that has been harvested at its optimal flavor and texture profile. And it's clean and it's local. There's nothing on these products. Again, like I said, don't wash them, just eat it. And you'll be happy with those farms. So this is, the, this is our product over here. Many of us have seen this, many of us eat this every day. It's a great new transition and evolution for our food industry. So our farms themselves, so what's so special about these farms? Operational efficiency, we can't forget about basic business fundamentals. Operational efficiency, one acre of our farm produces the equivalent of what's produced on 100 acres of outdoor agriculture. So one to 100 operational efficiency. This is what our industry is striving for because we know how important it is. I'm an agricultural person. I know what goes into agriculture and what goes elsewhere. And that's what we really have to watch out for. Because we know there's problems in agriculture. We've heard it, we hear it all the time. Agriculture is the largest contributor to greenhouse gas emissions around the world. Also, there's runoff from agriculture fields that ends up in our, our field streams, our streams, rivers, in a form of algae. Algae blooms are created. And that's a massive problem for the world's ecosystem. Lastly, we know a third of the food produced in the world is wasted at the farm, in the transportation, and in my refrigerator. I fear the days when I buy strawberries or lettuce. Two days later, I open the refrigerator, I see a big pile of fuzzy, fuzzy strawberries, and I see a big pile of brown goo with my lettuce because it hasn't made the journey. <clears throat> so that goes right into the trash. And that's a shame because a lot of energy, resources, people's time has been put into getting that food product to me. And that's what's really difficult about our in industry. But for us, these are non-issues. In a vertical farming world, these are non-issues because we have a clean, safe food. We are very cognizant of the fact that we can feed the world, address global hunger issues, not in totality, but we can be a small player in that space. We're also local. But we know as well what's important to the world are greenhouse gas emissions and what it's doing to climate change. We are striving for carbon neutrality. We're also, better yet, striving for carbon, carbon negativity. And that can happen. None of this is impossible. It's a perfect balance of economics, science and technology, engineering, the marketplace. But you have to really have your hand in that at all times because the world is a complicated place. So what do we see now? Projections are that 80% of the world's population are going to live in urban areas. That's massive. Today's population of 8 billion people, 6.4 billion people living in Chicago, New York, Shanghai, Paris, Boston. That's going to put a lot of strains in our population and in our, in our infrastructure. But just imagine a world where they're getting their food from a vertical farm. That's just right down the road. Not from 3,000 miles away, not from 6,000 miles away, or not from 12,000 miles away. And that's where most of the food in Dubai is coming from. They import 80% of their food. So it is a beautiful desert. It's a beautiful country and city. So it's integral for them to really embrace this as part of their national food sustainability strategy, which is really critical. But it's not just about food sustainability, it's about nutrition sustainability, getting the right diet in people. And that's what these products offer, the right vitamins, minerals, and nutrients. This has to be part of our diet to make us as healthier human beings, because food is health, and we anticipate that. So with the food going on, we like, to, we like to use the motto, producing global food local. Because again, you don't have the miles that generate greenhouse gas emissions. Our food has longer shelf life because you're not going two weeks on a journey to your, to your, to your stores or to your shelves. And there's a lot of stuff about the food industry and the food system that you do not know of. A lot of the food is fumigated in those trips to make them ripen faster. So they're harvested at a stage where you really don't want to eat it, and then it's added some kind of additive that makes it ripen faster, or not ripen fast, and so forth and so forth. It just does put food on the shelves. What we're talking about here is not a mass 
evolution, our mass revolution of the food industry, we're talking about the fact that we need to be doing something different in this space. Because what we're seeing out there, and you've heard it from other people as well, is that we cannot solely rely on the past 2,000 years of agriculture production practices to solve the challenges we're going to face in the next two to 10 years in our food supply system. We need to do something different now. And this vertical farming industry is part of that urban farming solution. It's at the pinnacle of climate smart agriculture. That's a new topic that's out there that's being discussed in uh, COP27 meetings. We really need to embrace something different. We can't look to the past to solve our problems that we have a 10 year horizon on or 20 year horizon. I've got young children, probably have grandchildren sometime. I wanna make sure the world is a much better place than it was when I took over. Now one thing about our industry is we not just about the farms, it's about the people in the farms. We embrace the STEAM areas, science, technology, engineering, art, mathematics. That's part of our company culture, that's part of our industry. But we have digital solution specialists looking at AI, computer visioning. We've got mechanical engineers, electrical engineers trying to optimize each of these farms so that the energy needed to produce the plants is the right amount of energy and not excessive, so we don't want to waste anything. We've got business professionals in this place, plant physiologists, plant biologists, we partner with dietitians, nutritionists, and all in a place called a controlled environment. I wish I had a controlled environment place I worked at when I was a kid, rather than being outside getting my third degree sunburns and whatever else. It was a fun time. It makes you stronger. If it doesn't kill you, it makes you stronger, right? So looking forward to that. But at the same time, we're also producing food that is sustainable. I've never seen food this clean and luscious in my life. And I've been all over the world. This is just something phenomenal that you can just eat right off the shelf. But I think I'm gonna leave you with this though, collaboration is essential. In our industry, like any other industry, we wanna collaborate with the food companies, the food manufacturing equipment companies, the retailers, the wholesalers, the grocers, restaurants, chefs, non-governmental organizations. We see the need for that. We also see the need to partner dramatically with local economic development groups, the cities, the states, the governments, this is, a, this is a partnership. This has to happen sooner than later. In my short life, I've seen a dramatic change in the environment and the food quality and the way things are going. So I'll leave you at that. I just want to thank you, and I look forward to us growing together in this industry. Thanks.